MCAE Healthcare partnered with the American Society for Anesthesiology to develop a game-based platform or a simulation screen-based platform in order to train practicing physicians, practicing anesthesiologists. And the idea is that in addition to or as an augmentation to live simulation training centers, they're also able to go online and get their CME credits and their MOCA credits or their maintenance of certification in anesthesiology. So this was developed with a team of anesthesiologists who also have an appreciation for simulation, many of them coming out of the live uh, simulation centers. And what we've done is we've looked at emergency anesthesia situations, some of the low occurrence or some of the low occurrence high risk events, and we've put them in a game-based platform so that you can try to manage the patient in an emergency situation. And we give you obstacles along the way to make it harder to, to manage the patient. So it's accessible via a web browser from wherever one wants to log in, whether it's their office, their home, the airplane, uh, even works pretty well off of a uh, phone hotspot, so it doesn't require a lot of bandwidth, nothing to install on the computer, um, no plugins or anything else like that. This case is a young male who was injured in a car accident. Right now the doctor is explaining or, or the surgeon is briefing the team as to his uh, situation, his history. Within the environment, I play the anesthesiologist. So I can look around, I can interact with any number of pieces of equipment, I can interact with the patient, I can look at his electronic medical record, for instance, and learn about all the information I need in order to, to treat him. As the anesthesiologist, I'm responsible now for really helping to stabilize the patient. Everything in the environment that glows yellow is an interactive object. So if I click on the IV pole, I can see that I'm giving him fluid, but at a really slow rate. I'll also want to give him uh, a little bit of oxygen, right? We can look at the patient monitor over here, and we can see that his oxygen rate is running a little low. I can also change how often we check his blood pressure. So let's do that a little bit more often, just to make sure that we, we keep track of that. Our mannequins all use a common software called Muse, and Muse helps that when the learner interacts with the mannequin, they're doing compressions, giving fluids, giving medications, that the mannequin then results, uh, reacts appropriately. And then you normally see that on a patient monitor. So we're doing the same thing in the game. You give medications, we give oxygen, we give, uh, we give fluids, and it goes through the cloud to our physiology engine. And then the physiology engine decides what the oxygen rate's gonna be, what the heart rate's gonna be, what the blood pressure is gonna be. For this project, we're gonna be deploying through the American Society for Anesthesiologists uh, Learning Management System. It ties into there. So we record every action, everything you've done, and the patient's stats at uh, a variable amount of time. Then at the very end, you get a score based on his physiology, as well as the uh, user actions. So did you do the right things in the right order? Did you look at the patient record? Did you use the right settings on the ventilator? Did you give the right medications? Those type of things. All right, so we are launching the SIM eyes, the symptomatic eyes. This is something which is unique in industry. They are very reliable and very realistic. So in terms of reliability, only after 10,000 hours of continuous use, the lights of the, the brightness will start to dim down. So this will translate, if you count 40 hours of, uh, of, let's say, of use per week, more than five years of use before the brightness will come down. In terms of realism, as you may see, um, we are able right now to replicate with a high level of accuracy the eyes of normal individuals, as well as those affected by uh, various conditions. It's very easy to change the conditions, just looking at the news menu, we have a couple of choices. We have jaundice, bloodshot, hemorrhage, keyhole pupil, and cataracts, as well as droopy eyelids. If we take as an example bloodshot, which is my favorite, immediately you'll see the bloodshot being applied to the, um, to the eyes. Also, what's new in Muse together with the CMIS is the capability of having consensual pupil response, as well as the capability to change the eye movement from left 
center right and so forth. Also, some, uh, uh, since we are a company of the global reach, we have the capability right now to change the eye color. We have three different choices, blue, hazel and brown. So this is the new CAE Vimetics AR module. So it's built on top of Vimetics that is, uh, that is built in using the Microsoft HoloLens. Um, so actually, what I'm going to do here is I'll activate the anatomy inside the mannequin. Okay. So if you want to actually look down at the mannequin, and then you should see the anatomy inside, right? Yes. So you can actually see as you hold your transducer uh -huh. okay. how the anatomy cuts through. So for the first time, we've taken the 2D augmented reality screen and we've put it into 3D, and now you can see inside the mannequin and how that ultrasound beam is captured. And we also have the ability to overlay the echo image as well. So now you can see the ultrasound image that you're acquiring as you cut through the anatomy of the mannequin. So this is the first application that we developed, and we actually did it in partnership with Microsoft. So our developers partnered up with the developers at Microsoft to, uh, to bring this application to life. And then we formed a, a partnership with them, so we're actually the first company that's able to distribute or resell the HoloLens directly to our customers.